Hello and welcome to Sleep Deprived. This is my very first podcast, which I'm a little bit nervous about because honestly, I have never, ever done anything like this before. And you give me a microphone and I will literally rant to anyone who is listening to me. So welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, If I stuff up, I'm sorry. Okay. I've never been given the platform, nor anybody has ever listened to me long enough to hear what I have to say. So thank you for tuning in and listening to my unfiltered life about motherhood, parenthood, and all the ups and downs, everything in between. It's messy, it's chaotic, and my tits will probably leak halfway through because my child will need to be fed. But thank you so much for joining me. I'm Indy Clinton and I'm 26 years old. I have three beautiful kids. Navy, he's three. Bambi, she's one, and Sol is 10 weeks. And no, they are not animals I'm naming. They are my children. I know some people don't like their names, but they are children, and I like the trendy names. Because to be honest, when they are older, the Jills, the Jillies, the Steves, the Susans, no offense to those names, but they're gonna be the outliers at school. And my little navy and the rivers and the gardens and the soils, they're gonna be the names that are in. So do not come at my name choice, okay? They are humans, not puppies. Um, I am formerly known as India. A lot of people don't know that, they think it's Indy. So that's my full name and my entire family call me India. I'm only really known as Indy online. So um, if you guys get to know me long enough, you can start calling me India. Um, I'm the youngest of five kids. I've got three brothers and a sister. I grew up in a large Catholic family down by the beach. We have an epic upbringing. My parents were always quite strict. Um, just with things like sleepovers and ear piercings, eating healthy foods. We were never, I can hear the baby. Can you hear her? Okay. Um, My parents were pretty strict. We um, grew up in quite a strict house where we weren't allowed sleepovers, where we weren't allowed sleepovers. We weren't allowed to have junk food. We weren't allowed to get our ears pierced until I was 18. But I had a really epic upbringing. You know, we were always outdoors surfing, um, skateboarding, climbing trees. We had an epic upbringing. And I thank my parents for that because honestly, I feel like kids these days, it's really hard to find a kid that just loves being a kid. And my parents really gave us that opportunity just to explore and to have fun. We had a curfew to be home in the afternoon. Um, It was just so amazing that they gave us that opportunity to be kids. And I really try to kind of give that to my kids now I try let them be kids and do what they want and have fun and just get messy and dirty because that's how I was brought up and honestly that's why I'm shaped as such a legend today I'm kidding kidding. but I just think I love that parenting and I love that I was given that opportunity just to be a kid but I've always kind of danced the beat of my own drum growing up. Um, being the youngest of five kids, you kind of always have to fight for attention. Like nobody ever listened to me. I think that has given me a few complexes today. Um, but it's always like I was the youngest of five kids. Like India, you had the last say in anything. Like, okay, you don't want to, <laughs> like you're coming with us. You're coming in the car. You're coming to your brother's footy game. You're coming to your sister's tennis. Like you're coming, you have no choice. So for me, I feel like it's definitely made me the way I am today. Like now at home, I'm like, you are listening to me and you are not talking over me, Big Eddie, because I'm having the final say in this because I guess I never got that growing up. But it definitely shaped who I am today because growing up, I always, I guess I kind of had to fight for attention being the youngest of five kids and I had to just somehow get attention and by doing that I just I was a little rebel and I was quite naughty and my mum said I was always naughty from a really young age like even as a little toddler I would get into things I would get lollies I was always getting free food off people I was always like somehow charming them into them giving me half the shop of free bread like I don't know how but my mum said I always got free pumpadums from the local Indian store. So random. And she's like they would literally give us bags and bags of pumpadums because they loved you. Um So that was definitely a perk of being the youngest of five kids. I just kind of had to fight for attention and I did that in a way that got me free shit. And here I am today, I'm still getting, I'm kidding. (laughs) But it definitely made me find my passions and kind of dance the beat of my own drum. Um, I grew up and I really wanted to play an instrument and all my other siblings played instruments, but they played the boring ones like clarinet, flute, saxophone, like all those, you know, I guess... (laughs) 
they're not boring, but I guess they're just, they're not, they're not wild. So of course, me being the youngest of five kids, I wanted to play the drums, obviously. Like why not pick an instrument that's already loud? Like let's just piss mum and dad off more. We'll make them get me a drum kit. I'll be playing the drums. It won't be, it'll be chaotic already at home. So I joined the band at school and I was playing the drums and I fucking love the drums. Like Imagine, this is who I wanted to be. Do you remember New York Minute? It was like Mary Kate Olsen and she was playing the drums with Green Day. I'm like, oh my God, that is me. Like that is going to be me. So I was playing the drums at school from about eight years old. I probably didn't even play the drums. I was probably like that sidekick who just had to like pass across the drumsticks and just like hit the snare drums like every 10 minutes. Like that was probably my role, but I really have it in my head that I was like the main character. Like I pretty much drove the school band to success. Um, but so I played the drums and it got to a point where I was like, mom, I'm pretty good now. Like I've hit the snare drum for a good 50 minutes each week. So like, I'm pretty good. Can I please have a drum kit? And she's like, I'm not buying you a drum kit. Like, you've got to be kidding me. She goes, if you want to play the drums, you can go join the local church and you have to play the drums. So you know what I did? I joined that local church just so I could bash out this drum kit every week because I was just getting some frustration out of me. Um, and I was in the local band at the local church every week. I played on a Saturday night and I'm there and I'm hitting that thing and I'm really living out my Mary-Kate Olsen dream. And I loved it. it honestly, I was just... I was so fulfilled until I mustn't have been that good because that church changed to a silent drum kit. And I don't know much about a silent drum kit, although they made me wear these earphones and I'm tapping and only I can hear it. And I, I, to this day, I don't really know if the audience, the old people, besides the fact that they were deaf, I don't know if they could hear me bashing the drums. But it really, that was the first complex it gave me because I was summoned to a silent drum kit in the local church. So that was number one that made me feel, that was one little setback, but that's okay. Secondly, my dad wanted one of us to be a professional sportsman. It was one of us. He was like, okay, I've got five kids. Surely one of you is going to make us some money. Um, so he got us into tennis, for all of us into tennis. Like before, after school, during school, we all had, we had a private tennis coach. We would go to tennis courts. He would drop us at these tennis courts for hours and would be hitting. His name was Ross. And if we like smashed the tennis, like if we were amazing that morning, my dad would buy us a chocolate milk. Like, oh my God, you wanted to get that oat chocolate milk. Um, so he would smash us on the tennis court with this tennis coach before school. You'd go to school starving. You'd go exhausted because you probably spent seven hours on the tennis court. And he was probably thinking one of these kids is going to be a pro. And I had, I had money on me, obviously, but my sister was actually so amazing at tennis. Like I'm pretty sure she, um, you know, played against Bernard Tomic growing up and all that. She was amazing. I was just as amazing, but not as amazing. I'll give you that, Bella. Um, but I was, I was pretty good for my age were all pretty good but my sister and I would definitely took the lead on tennis um, and my entire childhood I was being dropped at a tennis court imagine this you're eight years old you've just been turned down by the local church to play the drum kit so now you're on to tennis my parents would drop me at the tennis court every Saturday for eight hours with two dollars to buy a can of creaming soda and they would drop me there and I would have to spend eight hours in the middle of summer hitting the ball against other kids and playing all different games. And I was like, oh my God, this is my childhood. Like at the time I thought it was epic because I had two bucks in my bag to buy a creaming soda. But now I look back and I'm like, oh, you guys would drop me every Saturday in 40 degree heat to play tennis. And I still didn't come out professional. Like what the fuck is wrong with me? So that was my second setback. So after playing tennis, I was like, okay, well, this isn't for me. My sister like went above and beyond. She was like playing against all these tournaments. She was heading out of school. She was going away. I'm like, okay, well, fuck this shit. I'm clearly not good at tennis. So that's when I... I always had a love for sport, always. My whole family, we grew up playing sport. We absolutely love sport. We lived and breathed it. Like I said, we grew up by the beach. We surfed, we swam, we skateboarded. My brothers were all very sporty. It was just kind of, I want to say it was in our bones. Um, so surfing was something I've done from a young age. And I started when I was three. Um, my dad said I was always quite timid. I was always the timid one, probably because they probably pushed me on a seven foot wave and I like drowned. Um, but I definitely got into surfing probably when I was about 11, 12. I've always known how to surf, but I took it quite seriously then. And I was like, 
I want to be Anne-Marie from Blue Crush. And if you've seen the movie Blue Crush, she's that blonde girl. It's Kate Bosworth. And I'm like, that's me. Okay, so see you later, Mary-Kate Olsen. I don't want to be the drummer anymore. I want to be Kate Bosworth. So here I am, a little 12-year-old. I'm about to start high school and I was obsessed with surfing. Like I lived and breathed it. If I wasn't watching videos online, I was painting my boards. If I wasn't doing that, I was buying secondhand surfboards. Like I wanted to be a professional surfer and I was so obsessed with it that like, oh my God, it would make me sick. Like I just loved it. Like Kelly Slater, eat your heart out. I wanted to marry Kelly. He probably had a wife and he was 30 years older, but I wanted to marry him. Um, so I got into surfing and I loved it. And I started doing... Um, surf comps. I grew up doing surf comps and I, sh I realized that I actually had social anxiety when I started doing these surf comps. I thought I just um, had went into fight or flight mode or I was just an idiot and I would sit out there for 25 minute heats and not catch a wave. Like I was pumped. I was so excited. I have my new surfboard. I'm like in my new rib curl outfit and I would paddle out and sit out on my board and not catch a wave. And do you remember this one song I would always sing in my head when I'm sitting in these surf comps out in my heat? Oh, and do you know what? I'm, I'm like, well done to, I'm pretty sure it's Subway that came up with this song, but it's still in my head like 13 years later. Perry, Perry chicken, Perry, Perry chicken, Perry, Perry chicken, chicken sub. That is all they're played in my head when I'm sitting out there in a 25 minute heat, not catching a wave. I didn't even eat fucking chicken. I was a pescatarian, but I'm like, oh my God, can this song get out of my head? And I still, I'm being haunted by it today because Perry, Perry chicken, Perry, Perry chicken, chicken sub. Like, oh, so that's how my surfing that's, you know what, that's when I first realized I had social anxiety because like, why do you paddle out and not catch a wave? And it's kind of when I realized I could never become a professional surfer because I, I just, I couldn't, I, I crumbled, I crumbled and I just could not catch a wave. So I was like, you know what, if I'm not going to be a professional surfer, I want to be a Lana Blanchard and I want to be a lifestyle surfer at least. I want to look hot in a bikini and just like, you know, be a good surfer, but I don't want to be on the CT. Um, so fast forward, I was still living and breathing surfing, but then I started high school and I guess I went to a high school where I had to commute an hour and a half each way every day. So I was up at 5.40, my dad would make breakfast, drop me to the bus stop at 6.30 and mind you, I'm like 12 years old, so I'm young, but like I'm committed to get a good education. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I clearly, I didn't do much with it. I just had three kids, um, but I'm committed and I, my parents were dropping us to the bus stop. I was commuting all the way to the city. I went to an all girls Catholic high school, which to be honest, I, I liked school. I didn't love it. And I think a lot of it had to do because I lost so much of my, my love for my surfing and my hobbies. So I commuted, I guess, a three and a half hour round trip and that was without a breakdown and there was always a breakdown every second day. So that was great. I had a lot of freedom in the way I commuted to school. Like sometimes I'd be like, oops, sorry, mum, dad, my bus broke down. Like I'm just, I'm at Manly Beach now. Like what the fuck? So I had a lot of freedom with that, but I also feel like being at an all girls Catholic school and growing up by the beach and being that quintessential Aussie Australian girl who surfed, I lost a lot of that. And I felt like it very, it affected me a lot because, you know, there weren't many girls, if any, that surfed in my year. And I was kind of like that Aussie girl. And I was like watching surfing videos online. I just wanted to be at surf comps. And I was just like talking about shackers and barrels. And they're like, what are you talking about? Um, and I think that's where it really stemmed and I lost myself a little bit starting high school. And I think that's where my hatred for school started because it wasn't as, I, I would get home late when it was dark. I didn't have time to surf. I, could, I couldn't surf before school. So I lost that all and I could only really surf on the weekends or school holidays. And then but next to that, I guess some girls at school would call me Gerfa and there wasn't really a, and Gerfa is like, a term for girl surfer like it was said in a negative connotation like it wasn't cool to surf as a girl back then and then surfing and you know took over for the girls so it um it was really hard I guess those first early years of high school having a passion and being the outlier and then that not being accepted and then losing that love and I just only really got to surf on the weekends and then I guess I could never become professional like my dreams because I had no time but I really lived and breathed it like if I wasn't watching videos I was entering competitions when I'm sitting there in 
food tech. Um, mind you, I did win that competition to Hawaii, Hawaii when I was 16. I was sitting there in food tech and I won a competition to go surfing in Hawaii. Um, and I would wag school and go to the surf comps in Manly. Like I would literally leave school because I wanted to be watching these surf comps. I was so invested um, in the sport. I just absolutely loved it. So fast forward, I'm 15 or 16, I'm still surfing. I'm still being that, you know, Aussie girl on the beach and I'm loving it. And, um, oh, mind you, I forgot to add, when I was 13, I um, started Facebook. And this is when I fully started getting into social media is when I started Facebook against my parents' will. Um, but I think they were too busy focusing on trying to get my sister to delete her MySpace page that they didn't, I'm the fifth child. They're like, oh my God, okay, she's on Facebook now. Like we're still trying to get Bella off MySpace we don't have time to worry about her on Facebook but one of my sister's friends actually helped me make the Facebook account I was 13 and I went to her college at Sydney Uni and I was like please make me a Facebook account I really really want one um, little did I know that was going to be like the door the gateway to my whole career right now um, so she made me a Facebook page and back then if you're not too old or not too young you would know that when you were on Facebook you could get like Facebook famous which they're not my words don't come at me I'm not calling myself famous I'm no Kylie Jenner but that's what you were back then Facebook famous um, you would post like a, a hot profile picture and if it got 5,000 likes like you were you were the chosen one you were like Facebook famous um, so I used to post pictures that would get taken down because my uncle and my aunties and someone would see them so I soon blocked all my uncle aunties cousins great aunts cousins best friends auntie I had to block everyone because if I posted a bikini pic of myself as a 14 year old girl they would send it to my dad or my mum or my brothers would find out then I would get grounded for three months um so that was a you know that just kept going like a hamster running on a wheel I post a hot pic of me I'm sorry my ass was cute back then not so cute now and then get reported sent through the family chats, grounded, repeat. And they, they were like, oh, this girl is unstoppable. She will not stop posting these photos. She doesn't care about being grounded. My phone would be taken off me, my iPod touch. Like it was just like a hamster on a wheel. But um, after Facebook, after my parents kind of realized that they couldn't stop me on Facebook because all my friends started joining and then I'm mom, I have to have Facebook because that's where people put their gatherings on like the events and if I'm not on that then like how not that my parents ever took me to gatherings or parties because we live so far away so that was that was character building um but so I was on Facebook and then when I was about 15 years old I joined Instagram and Instagram was a brand new app like it nobody had Instagram prior to that there was no such thing as an influencer it was called a blogger and you would blog online that was before my day um, we won't get to that but I was on Instagram and I downloaded it and I just started posting what I got up to on the weekend I guess me with my surfboard me on a skateboard um, I would post random shit like a handful of shells like who the fuck's gonna like a handful of shells now it was so it was honestly so genuine back then. Like you, you would post a photo of you holding a handful of shells and it would get like 12,000 likes. Like that is so, that's so cute. Can you imagine doing that now? Nobody would like that. <laughs> They'd be like, is this girl drunk? Um, so they were the type of photos I would post. And I was often described as a quintessential Aussie girl, which was, I guess my vibe. I had this long blonde hair that was so ratty and it probably needed a haircut for the last seven years. I had this beautiful tan. I've always been tanned. Um, I was just, you know, I was surfing and I was just like carefree, I guess just kind of how I am now just with dyed brunette hair. Um, and I started posting those photos and organically my Instagram just started growing and I, I guess I didn't do anything to make it grow and I was so young I didn't know why it was growing I was just like people like what I post so I'll just keep collecting shells on the beach and posting that um, so it just kept growing and I remember sitting at lunchtime when I was in year 10 and I was about 15 years old so mind you I'm 26 so 11 years ago and I hit 10k followers on Instagram and I'm like oh Oh my god guys I have 10,000 people post like um I have 10,000 people following me and I went to a One Direction concert and they were like this is a sold out concert of 10,000 people and I remember looking around the concert being like oh my god this many people follow me like that is insane and from that moment my Instagram just kept growing and 
before it, this was before influencers. So I would just like to preface that I am the OG influencer. And if anybody wants to challenge me on that, come at me. Um, because I literally, um, I'm sure there's a couple, but I, I'm OG. I am like the, the top tier. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I have been through the, I have been through it. And for so many years I have lived and breathed this industry and I've evolved with it. Um, and I grew completely organically. You know, I wasn't on a reality TV show or anything like that. I just grew from posting some cute shells and some kiwi fruits and some bright fruit salads and me hanging upside down from a tree. Like random shit like that just made me grow organically. Um, but I remember the first thing I got sent for free and shout out to O what is it? OB5 skateboards, like OB5 skateboards. I don't know if you still exist, but if you see this, you guys are the OGs because you were the very first people that wanted to send me a gift when I was 15. And it was a skateboard. I'm like, how on brand is that? You guys want to send me this epic skateboard so I could carve it up in the streets. Um, and you sent it out and I was emailing you and you sent it out and my mom goes, no, India, you're, we're sending this back. I'm like, what do you mean, mom? Like we can't, send this skateboard back. She goes, nothing is free in this world, India. We are sending this back. And I was like, no, 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 mom, you don't understand. Like, They want me to post like a, a photo on my Instagram for this skateboard. She goes, no, nothing's free in this world, India. They'll want something from you. I'm like, mom, you don't, you don't get it. They want a photo. She was like, nah. So we had to send those skateboards back. And I was so deeply embarrassed that I had to send these skateboards back saying, I'm so sorry, my mom says I can't accept this gift. And they were like, um, no, like we want you to have this so you can post. And I'm like, no, my mom said no. Um, so that was my very, very first gift. And after that, it just kind of started as like a domino effect, like more things started coming along. And this one brand, I don't remember the name, but they want to send me a dress. And this was like at the very beginning, right after the skateboard, they're like, you know what? Here's a floral dress. And I was like, oh my God, like what 15 year old would be obsessed with a floral dress being, sent? I actually think many 15 year olds would. And I was stoked. I was so excited, but like, it so wasn't my, it wasn't on brand with me. Like, I don't think I ever wore a floral dress. I was in rash vests or wetsuits. Like that was so not my vibe, um, but I accepted it because it was for free and they wanted a photo obviously. So, you know, staying on brand and being true to myself, I was like, what better photo than to go out into the backyard and take a photo with my pet chicken? I thought it was the best idea ever. So I'm there in the backyard in this floral dress, getting my mum to take a photo and I'm holding the chicken in one hand and I take this photo and I send it back to them. And they were like, um, no, we weren't actually really, we were hoping for like a photo on your red bike. And I was like, nah, fuck that. Here's a photo of me and my chicken. If you don't like it, here's your dress back. And I think from that moment, I was like, oh shit, people actually want to send me stuff and then they're not going to like it. And I'm like, why don't you like it? Like, didn't you just send me the dress and you don't like me holding my chicken? Like, is, is my chicken offending you? So I send back the dress because I didn't want a photo on my red bike. I was like, nah, you can have my chicken. Um, and from that moment, my dad, who is quite business savvy, he was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. These brands are contacting you. We're going to write up a Word document. We're charging them $50 a post, all right? So you're going to write. So when a brand emails you, you send them back this Word document and they have to sign it. They have to deposit 50 bucks into your account and then you provide them. It's like business and service or some whatever he was saying. And I was like, that's a really good idea, Dad. And 50 bucks for me, like that's my phone credit for like the month. That was epic. So that's what we did. And that's how I started on Instagram and I started charging 50 bucks and after about a year, um, Chic Blogger Management, that's what they were called back then, they picked me up and they're like, we want to be a manager. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, I, they want to manage me, like manage me do what? Like for me, I was just taking photos on my iPod touch of my everyday things or, you know, things I got up to on the weekend. And I'm like, they want to manage me. This is wild. Um, and I was with them for six years, which was crazy, but I look back and you know, my whole life has been so filtered because like I said, I've grown up on social media. I've, I joined Facebook when I was 13. I had my whole family kind of watching and making sure I'm not posting anything sexual or anything like that and make grounding me. And then I was on Instagram and I had to really preserve my image growing up from such a young age. And not that I'm likening myself to Justin Bieber, <laughs> but I see how these child stars, um, 
feel because from a young age you have to worry about your image like think about what you're doing when you're 15 you're 16 and you're experimenting with things and I had to I was on social media I was plastered on social media I was going to events before school I was going to events during school after school um, I would have to leave in lunch breaks or go find the school mulberry tree to take photos for brands that I had committed I was getting paid 100 bucks to do like I had work, I had bills to play. Um, so I was taking photos, I was just making it work. And I had this one best friend who I'm still besties with, her name's Elle, and she was like my photographer. She was like, all right, let's go. You're gonna get in the mulberry tree down by the gym, the, P, the, the gym at school, and we're gonna take this photo. I'm like, yep, sweet. So I'm like climbing that tree and I'm like dangling a mulberry ab above my mouth and I'm trying to get this photo for like boohoo or something like that. Um, and it really was so new to, I guess, there was no such thing. Influencer still wasn't even a word. I remember my mum once saying to me, being like, the jobs, you know, the job that you're going to have from this is not even created yet. Like, there's no such thing as like, I, like, I don't even know what I was called. I was called a blogger. I don't even know what I was called back then. But like, influencer did not exist. It was so new and it was crazy because I had so much reach and so much power through my iPod touch and I had no idea like I honestly was so I didn't know what I was doing I was just posting but it opened up a full doorway for me into where I am today um and you know I was doing photo shoots with surf dive and ski and rip curl and I remember then I was really feeling myself because they loved this Aussie girl and they played on with that I could surf so a lot of shoots I had to surf and be in bikinis and things for sea folly and it was so much fun because then I was starting to get my my passion and my love for surfing back. You know, I could do a full day shoot for sea folly and like um, and surf dive and ski and be surfing and in bikinis. I was like, oh my god, this is so epic! And there were so many amazing opportunities that I've had from such a young age. You know, I've travelled, I've been to Mexico, I've been to festivals, I've been to Byron Bay, I've worked with the Breast Cancer Foundation and Mount Franklin Water when I was 15, 16, and had these huge blow up images of me. Um, I worked with. Some Samantha Wills closely and it was just from such a young age I've had to grow up so quickly because I was thrown into this industry that was not even established and it was so new to everyone and I grew up online on the internet but still being heavily monitored by my parents and my family and you know anything I posted that was you know that my parents didn't allow I'd have to delete so I was so heavily monitored and I guess that had a trickle effect effect into my, um, you know, I guess with my school friends and things like that, I couldn't really go to parties or I couldn't, you know, my parents were just like, no, you're not going to that. But looking back, I think they did it to protect my image because you get to an age 16, 17, where you want to start experimenting and have a sip of alcohol and do that. And they would not ever drop me to a party. And if they didn't drop me, I couldn't catch a bus and I wasn't allowed to sleep over. Um, and I, well, I could catch a bus, but fuck catching a bus when you're catching one three and a half hours every day to school. So I was like, oh, hell no. Um, so, and I definitely think they did that to protect my image because I was thrown into social media at such a young age. They didn't want me being exposed to all these things and getting a bad rap to my name at such a young age. And I thank them for that because looking back, it definitely could have gone pear shaped. <laughs> It definitely could have gone pear shaped. So fast forward to 18, I finished school. I had an amazing group of friends. Um, I've, I was always an outlier though. I was definitely always an outlier where, um, you know, I had a passion for the surfing and the beach. And then I joined Instagram and no one else in my year or around me was Instagram famous as they would call it. So that also made me an outlier and I would cut some slack from that, you know, like, oh, you're just Instagram famous taking selfies. I'm like, babe, I take photos of my necklaces stacked or like like my shells um and that evolved and when I was 18 I guess I um I don't know it's funny because I finished school but I wasn't really into because I didn't grow up doing it I wasn't really into the whole party lifestyle I definitely did it um don't get me wrong but I could not back up at a three-day festival like that wasn't really my vibe so I definitely always wanted to be a young mum and I've wanted that my entire life and I knew I wanted that so I think when I was searching for boyfriends I'm like who wants to marry me and have my kids put your hands up um but I definitely was looking for that I wasn't like here to fuck around like I want a husband and I want to have kids young so I went to uni and I studied media marketing for two years and then I dropped out because I was like so deeply involved in media marketing from 
age 13 or 14, 15, um, that they were teaching us from a textbook. And I'm like, why are we teaching us from a textbook when this is such a fast growing industry and it's adapting every single day? Um, and changing and the market is becoming saturated with influences and that's kind of when influences started growing um, and I just was like this is so bizarre they're teaching us from a textbook like about this like and we're getting taught by like an 85 year old like what the hell does he know about social media um, no all respect to those professors but I dropped out and I was like this ain't my passion like I'll be posting pictures but like going to uni and I also had it in my head that unis would be that American type uni where you could go and make friends and I went there and there's just all these people and I'm like who wants to be my friend like no one is like putting their hand up and I guess I wasn't I, I'm someone that gets social anxiety which you probably don't know that about me but like I could talk for hours but put me in a room with hundreds of thousands of people and I would literally hundreds of thousands what am I talking about like I'm Taylor Swift put me in a room with four people and I will seize up. Like I'm that chick that used to do school speeches and like laugh and then piss myself. And even more so now I'm a mum. I piss myself when I sneeze. So nothing's really changed. But um, yeah, it was one of those things when I went to uni and it wasn't that experience I had envisioned in my head. I remember going, my dad was like, you just got to go to the bar, find the bar. And like, you know, you have a drink with friends. So I'm sitting at that bar and I have one wine. I get drunk and then I have to go to a class and like I'm like where are all my friends like who wants to have a wine with me and get lit um so I gave up on that dream to become a studious girl and I dropped out and uh, do you know what I I enjoy learning and I love learning but come to assessments or exams and I literally start singing that Perry Perry chicken song in my head again like I think that's my anxiety song so good on you Subway for like coming with such like you know making up such a clever gif because it stuck with me um but so I dropped out and then I actually studied my cert three and four in health and fitness because that was a huge passion of mine um health and fitness I just love I think health and fitness is such a amazing thing to have a passion for because it's an everyday thing it's a lifestyle it makes you feel good it makes you those happy endorphins pump so I studied that um I I loved it. I, I wanted to be a PT after studying that and I did make a six week challenge after I studied that and I got super fit and I, um, you know, kind of educated myself about health foods and things that you think are healthy, are calorie dense and I just learned about the different muscles in your body and what workout and what things do to your body and how this makes you feel and things like that. So I love that and that was definitely – the way I wanted to go. I like, I was like, see a media marketing, I want to go health and fitness route. Um, and so it's really cool now because I guess being postpartum, I can still bounce back and fall back on that to kind of, you know, make me feel better and study all of that. What the fuck am I talking about, bitch? Um, so <laughs> carrying on. <laughs> Bitch is rambling. Um, no, where was I? Okay, health and fitness. Okay, so then I met Big Eddie in 2019. We actually met in 2018 and then we didn't officially start dating till 2019. I'm pretty sure it's 2019 or is it 2018? It's one of those. Don't um, quote me. But then we ended up having Navy in 2020 and that's when the chaos started. And that is also when I started my TikTok account. I think I started in 2021. Um, and I started it again really organically, but I had still had my Instagram account and I was posting, but I was kind of like just posting without a purpose. Like I was a mum, but I would post here and there, but there was nothing that interesting really to post about because, um, they're just, I think it was a time when social media was changing and people wanted to see reality. They didn't care about those designer handbags and those aspirational trips and all that bullshit. They wanted to see real life. Like they wanted to follow you to feel better or to feel less alone. Whereas prior to that, Instagram was a highlight reel. And I find Instagram still kind of is a highlight reel and there's all those editing apps, but now it is changing a little and people want to be more relatable because that's what people want to see. Like they don't want to feel depressed that you're in Europe having a six week holiday and I'm at home slugging my ass out with three kids with leaking tits and my hemorrhoids popping out of my asshole. Like they don't want to see, like they want to relate. 
And when I started TikTok, I had a friend and she was like to me, you should start posting your day in the life as a mom with Navy. And he was 15 months old at the time. And I'm like, who is going to find that interesting? Like that is so batshit boring. Like I take him to the park. He's wild. I clean up after him. He makes a mess. He's a wild child. And who wants to see that? And she goes, trust me, it's really interesting. So that's when I started TikTok and I made this account and I just started posting, taking Navy for a walk, looking at diggers, climbing up things in the park. Like he was a wild toddler and he's definitely calmed down now, probably because he's experienced everything young. Like he's like, all right, I've done that. I don't need to break any bones. I'm done. Um, and that's when I started TikTok and it started growing pretty quickly. Like I remember hitting 300K and I was like, oh my God, this is wild. Like video content is so much more engaging and so I think for the viewer to see, you get a better insight into someone's life because you don't you don't edit. You can't edit your face and you can't edit your body. It's just real life. And you can pick up a lot on how someone is and their personality based off video content. Of course, um, unless they're lying and they turn it on for the camera. Like me, I'm actually a really angry bitch. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I... Um, my video content, definitely, that's when I think I found my niche because I loved doing it. Whereas taking a photo for Instagram, like holding a brand, you know, a skincare, like doing that and holding it like that, like a real orchestra photo, like for me, that wasn't me. That was so not me. Like, do you know how many photos it takes for me to get a hot shot? It takes about like, I would make Ben hold down the camera for a good seven minutes until there's like 3000 photos for me to like one. Um, wait, is my milk coming in? No. I just have tingling tits. Um, so I really loved video content and I think for me it was such a passion and I just put my time and effort into it and I would do voiceovers. That's how I started on TikTok. I would film all day what we got up to, going to the aquarium or the zoo and then I'd sit at the end of the day. I'd be like, Ben, shut up, don't speak, I'm doing a voiceover. Um, and I would do a voiceover and that's how I kind of grew on TikTok. And it was really cool because I got so many mums and parents from around the world following me like so quickly. Like I would get mums being like, um, hi, I'm from Montana in America. Like I had so many Americans. At one point I had like 48% percentage sorry I'm speaking statistics but I had about 48 percent of mum like women in America following me which is so much higher my nose is leaking so much higher than Australia um and I really at that point I was like I think TikTok is my thing because people want to see real life and they want someone who's relatable and I didn't sugarcoat anything I just wanted mums to feel like we're in this together because I think a lot of the time when you're a mum, it's very isolating and you can definitely feel like you're alone when I, you're not alone. It's just mums don't show this part because it's messy and because it's a little bit crude or they don't want to talk about it. And that's why I kind of wanted to create a platform where I am that, that crude mum that will talk about those hemorrhoids that pop out of her ass or like, you know, that mum to let you know that you do bleed for six weeks after you give birth. Like no other book told me that. So I wanted to be that platform that made women feel less alone. And it's funny because I have so such a wide range of, I guess, a target market following me. I've got, you know, 13 year olds who follow me because they think my kids are cute. And then I have 55 year olds, grandparents who follow me because, you know, they, they love to follow me and their grandkids love me or their daughters love me. And they just, they can really relate whether it's my angry husband or my wild kids or me. I'm just a mess, but I just, I thrive off chaos. Um, so that's where I am today. And I won TikToker of the year last year in 2023, which was such a surprise to me because um, what I do doesn't feel like work. I just genuinely love sharing and being real because it brings this community together for other mums to feel less alone. And not just mums, whether you're an 18 year old girl and you're thinking about having kids and I'm your birth control, like that's me. Or whether you're just a burnt out parent that just wants to watch something refreshing so you feel like you're not alone. I definitely feel like I've created that platform to laugh, to cry, to to hate me on whatever whatever vibe you're feeling or whatever mood you're in you can do whatever um so here I am today recording my very first podcast and I'm really excited for this podcast because I definitely feel like on TikTok and Instagram I don't 
I let you in on my life, but I'm never sitting down and chatting to you because I'm always interrupted without with my kids. But this is a platform for you guys to get to know me on a deeper level, to get to know about relationships and friendships and things I've never really spoken about before. Um, there's a lot of me to unpack. There's definitely a lot. And I'm just excited to share this journey with you all because I'm actually cooler than I look. I promise. Like I'm not a dag. I know you think mums are dags. And I definitely thought that before I had kids. And then I was like, if one person calls me a dag, like I will actually crumble and cry for the rest of my life. Um, you know, mums are cool. We're just, we are just bad asses. What the fuck am I saying? So with that being said, I'm actually bringing in a link where you can call 1-800-SLEEP-DEPRIVED and you can leave me a voice message and I will be answering a few of your questions at the end of each episode. You can make them as rogue as you want and listen out because I will be calling you out and I'll be answering your question. Hi. Well, that is really, that is a nice way of saying you like them because a lot of people have can actually compare them to dogs and cat names. And they say to me, imagine a lawyer with a name like Bambi. I'm like, guys, do you think she's going to be a lawyer? Like she, my kids aren't going to be lawyers. I mean, they might, but like with the way I'm parenting, they're going to be like jackass stunt double. Um, but I definitely think the names kind of come from, um, with Navy's name, I was looking up strong military names. I don't have any family in the military. I, I don't know why, but for me, that showed strength um, and quite empowering. So I kind of came up with the name Navy from looking up that, I guess, for being in the Navy. Um, and then a Navy vessel to me was strong. And I feel like the color Navy to me is romantic. And I love that name. Like I like the background of names. Um, for Bambi, I it's funny, my nickname for Ben, when for Bambi, my nickname, it was funny because Ben used to call me Bambi because I'm tall. I trip over my limbs. Um, I'm a bit goofy. I trip over anything. Even here today, I've tripped over a few things. I've dropped some fruit, like I've spilt water. Um, so that's how we got the name Bambi. We've always loved that name and we thought it was too quirky. She was originally going to be a Paloma. Um, but, and with a nickname Lomi Lomi, which tied into my love for Hawaii and surfing. But then Bambi just came out of the woods. Oh my God, that was no pun intended. Does Bambi live in the woods? Yeah, I think so. She's a deer. No, it's a he. Anyway, on to Soul. Um, and Soul, my sweet soul, she truly is a sweet little soul. She's here with me today. Um, that's actually an interesting one. It's because I fell pregnant five months after having Bambi. And in my head, I was really questioning if I was ready to have another one. And I was questioning whether I wanted to continue on with the pregnancy because I was like, I don't think I can do this. Like I've just come out of the trenches with Bambi and I'm still breastfeeding. And I just don't know mentally if I can handle being pregnant for another nine months and sacrificing and not feeling myself and not working out and then going through that again. And I really questioned you know, whether I wanted to continue with the pregnancy. And that was back and forth for a few weeks, um, which made me come up with soul because I felt like in my heart and soul, I really wanted to continue with her. I was like, no, this is right. Like this is, I want soul more than anything. And now looking at her, I'm like, I can't believe I even questioned that because you are everything. And I think she's such a sweet little soul. And I just know I felt that in my soul to continue and have her even though there was going to be hardships and even though I was going to be in the trenches for so long I just knew in my soul that I wanted her and I was just going to make it work I don't care if my mental state suffers a little bit I want this baby and here she is and yeah that's how I got the name I definitely think I would be a forensic. That is 
so wild. I know, I know. But um, I there's two jobs I would be. One would be a uh, forensic, I think, investigating. Like, I am so good. Like, if Ben tells me he's at the gym, I will literally somehow track down what gym he's at, what room he's in, and what treadmill he's on. Like, I don't know how, but I have the superpowers. Um, so that is one really good trait of mine. Secondly, I would also be like a music scout. Like something you guys probably don't know about me is I'm obsessed with music. I like rap and I like country and I like R&B, soul. And I like reggae. Um, and my dream job has always been to like a PR management where you get to travel and tour with like a big artist and like do all their PR and go backstage and take their pics. Like that is like my dream job. Like when I was younger, I was that weirdo that would always Google like um, amazing singer on YouTube and like 10 year old singer girl singing dance with her father dance with my father like I was that weird one and then I would just sit there in awe like I was a frustrated singer and a frustrated actress and I think that's why I have always wanted to do something in the music industry because if I don't have the talent I may as well manage someone with the talent you know but uh my, my time is gone so I can only dream <laughs> Um, that's a good question. It's really hard because right now she is kind of like the mute one. I guess obviously she's a newborn, but like I see her and like the house will be chaos and everyone will be screaming and I will be crying in the corner and then then Soul's there and her balance are like and I'm like, how, how, how are you not crying after hearing all of this? Like, she's so easygoing and so adaptable. I think she's honestly going to be her own personality. Like, she probably looks at Bambi and she's like, fuck that shit. I'm not doing that. And then she looks at Navy and she's like, I'm not doing that either. Like, I'm going to be the angel little Solina. Um, so I actually don't think she'll be like either of them. I think she'll be the quiet one. But come back to me in a few months because I feel like I'm going to be biting my own tongue then. Do you translate? <laughs> what inspires your content and what and what type do you prefer? Okay. <laughs> um can you play it again so I don't laugh? Um, that's a really good question. I wish I could understand. <laughs> okay. I look like I've been crying. <sighs> um, what inspires my content? I think that's a really good question. <laughs> that's a really great question. Um, what inspires my content? I think... Um, my biggest inspiration would be for mums to feel like they have someone that can really understand them and know where they're coming from and make them feel less lonely and isolated on these long days. And for me, that would probably inspire me the most because some days I'm like, you know what, kids, I want you guys to dress up and I want us to go get Santa photos and I want us to look clean and nice. And then I think to myself, that's not real life. That is not who I am. And that's not what real life is with kids kids are messy and they're gross and navy started to pick his nose and taste it and i'm like you are whack like i just feel like my biggest inspiration is to make mums feel less alone and to create a community so you feel like somebody is there with you because i know what it feels like to go through the trenches and all your friends to fuck off and i know what it feels like those long days and you're exhausted and all you want is someone to understand you. So I think that is my biggest inspiration. And my favorite type of content is video content because you can really get an insight into someone's life and someone's personality. Um, and you really can just be authentic. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't wear makeup. I wake up, I roll out of bed and I start filming. I film when I hum, I'm hung over. I film, I, I try, you know, I do try not to film when I'm like down in the dumps. I'll speak about it the next day when I'm feeling better. But when I'm like having one of those days where I'm like, I just want to be a stripper. Um, <laughs> no, 
not really, but do you know, I have those days where I'm like, here I am at 26. I've got three kids. My tits literally touch my kneecaps and my hair, my hair is falling out. Like, what is this life? And I get down in the dumps, but it doesn't take me long. You know, then I go smell the grass and I go outside and get some fresh air and I feel good again. But I don't, I, I try not to post when I'm in those moods because I, there's enough negativity in the world. I want to be sharing positiveness and I want to be happy online because I want to make f people feel good. And um, yeah, then, yeah, that's it. Yep, cool. I've got some really exciting guests coming on. I've got Big Eddie, I've got Martha, I have some therapists. So I hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned because I can't wait to show you what other things we have planned. Bye. Toodles.